cool. All right, brother. Well, happy Thursday night. Yes, another, sir. Another good week for the Lakers. So let's uh, just get started by saying, you know, um, hi to everybody, I guess, that's listening. You know, thanks uh, again for uh, for listening. And then for you, you know, thank you for being a part of the, the podcast. Hell yeah, man. Happy to be all happy to talk some Lakers, uh, some Kobe, whatever we get into today, man. This is, uh, uh, you know, the Lakers always, the Lakers are rolling, man. They are rolling. I don't think I've seen a team in this much groove since, you know, since the, since the Warriors, when they went on that 73 and nine run, it, it feels like they're just, you know, in a, you know, just in a, in a, in a, in a zone where, they're taking over, you know, they're, they don't care who's in their way. <laughs> and it feels like every team that they're going up against just expects to go home with an L, you know, so uh, it's kind of it's kind of nice to see, you know, um, I'm with you on that. I, I think the biggest difference for bit has for me has been their defense. Because right. on offense, we know they have the the two main players with AD and LeBron that they can put up points you know e- e- pretty easily the, their offensive um, skills or abilities are top notch top level in the nba but uh, defensively i feel like that's something that last season we saw a lot of and then this season in the beginning the first few games i feel like they were struggling a little bit on that and cl- games were a little bit close but i think we've seen these last few games especially uh last night's game against the thunder they just dominated since the first quarter. Uh, they, they just came up, came out firing on both ends, and and so I think for me the defense has been something that stands out the most, and the reason why they're they're looking so dominant. Yeah, and that's the key word, dominant, right? They're just dominating the teams. You know, they 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 damn damn near killed the franchise you know <laughs> they they got they they finally got james harden traded <laughs> you're welcome james you're right? welcome man oh they they killed the franchise with that if, if they had any hope to stay alive you know to keep james harden around they got killed you know oh yeah just to lebron man that 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 three-pointer that steph curry turn around no look oh man that that was nasty <laughs> He's been on a row uh, shooting wise and threes as well. He had five threes yesterday, so he's been filling it from from the three point range, which is good because we know that he can drive in. That's his his like go to move, and he can you know take over games by you know physically going inside and and using his body for that. But as he gets older, right, we know that we're gonna see him do less of that and and shooting more fadeaways and shooting more threes. And I think. You know, we're seeing him get better, at least so far. He's been doing good. Yeah, he's definitely, you know, adjusting. I know that's partly, you know, something that he's he's focused on. Uh, you know, th- it, when he was younger in his career, his jump shot was a big criticism. He didn't have a jump shot mm-hmm. uh, and he developed it. And it seems like now he's developing an even, an even like more deadly, you know, long range shot that he could pull up from the logo. Even I've seen him pull up. So he did, <laughs> so. He did that. Yeah um you know it's gonna it's gonna be it's kind of gonna be unstoppable because because and i'm glad he's on our team because <laughs> it takes it takes a whole it's gonna take a whole super team to stop him now you know oh, yeah. um and he looks happy man that that's the one thing that 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 i would say uh 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 stands out right now about the team that uh, aside from the defense and how dominant they're being on that end is that they just look happy and mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was John Wall that that in a post game interview uh, after the first game, he 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 said those guys are creating their own energy on the bench. Yeah. Uh, there's no fans. There's no even though they're 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 road games. There's no fans and there's no energy from 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 a, a regular season game. But th- these guys are cheering each other on after every score, and and. I don't see any other team doing that right now, just gelling like that. These the chemistry is unreal right now, and I'm just hoping that you know it's early in the season, and I know LeBron's a you know he's 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 a veteran leader. Uh, you could tell AD's maturing so much, you know, and just listening to him talk, you could tell that 
that, that, that maturity level is kicking in and you're kind of like, okay, this guy's coming into his own as a leader also. Mm-hmm. Um, so this team, this team, I'm, I'm very happy where they're at. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that concept, that idea of them creating their own energy is one, it, it's a huge difference. And that's ultimately what's going to get them another championship because I think they learned that also from being part of the bubble and going all the way to the end and, and being there for so long that they had to, in a way, motivate themselves and, and build that chemistry by creating that energy, it, by, even with the bench players, right? Because it, it makes sense. It, it adds up. It, if you're a bench player, right, and you don't have fans to look at, you don't have the extra noise going on, you you are more focused just watching your teammates. You're, you're more focused in the game. And so whenever you get any of these guys making, making a shot, it doesn't matter if it's a fancy shot. It can be just any shot. They're, they're happy, a layup, they're excited, yeah. a layup. Yeah, exactly. And, and then especially when you see things like a nice dunk, then they go even crazier. And when you see a no look three from LeBron and and Schroeder betting, you know, like like <laughs> I bet you you can't make it or whatever he told her, right? I bet you something. So so they're definitely uh, you know a, a step up in a sense. They figured out a way to 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 play through this bubble and through COVID in a in a way that it seems like other teams haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, I, I I agree. You know, I think they they definitely have that edge where that they've they've figured out this this arena in COVID. Uh, uh, um, in every single arena, it's like it feels like they're in the bubble, right? With no fans or limited fans in in, in Houston, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but they've definitely figured out how to create their own energy, and and no other team has figured that out. So we've got that competitive edge now. It'll be different. We'll see once fans are are back in the uh in the mix hopefully later this season right mm-hmm. with with hopes you know of a, of a vaccine rollout or 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 you know as as we try to get through this um coronavirus pandemic we hope to see you know people be able to attend games again yeah. but um they've got the edge right now you know mm-hmm. with with how the cards are are playing out right now they definitely got the edge and i don't think anybody will crack that code. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. Um, well, uh, a couple of things to point out, right? They're, they won seven games in a row on away games, which is a, rec- a franchise record. So that's something to keep in mind going forward, just trying to continue that record. And just thinking back to all the teams that the Lakers have had, that this team with LeBron and AD as the leaders, they're the ones that are doing something like this. And obviously... With COVID, you know, so many things change, but still, it's still something that, you know, you just you just have to keep that in mind. They're they're playing so good right now. Does that does that does that count to you in this in this uh, pandemic? That's gonna be oh, the yeah. little asterisk. It, it, I I think it it does count because they could easily be a team that's not focused, right? It it mm-hmm. can go both directions, and they they're choosing. They they want to be the best. They they want to be connected as a team they want to you know win and for example if we look at the rockets right the 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 chemistry wasn't there the energy wasn't there and they their leader Harden wasn't leading them he was kind of just doing his own thing you know and and it was interesting to even hear like the Marcus Cousins just talk about how since day one they you know he felt like like Harden didn't want to be there and Cousins was okay with that because the reason he went was because he wanted to well, play John together Wall. with John Wall. So, you know, just things like that, you hear those things and, and you can, you can just see how, uh, you know, the, the Lakers are in a different place. Right. And, and so to me, the seven games in a row, it does count it, it mm-hmm. because they could have easily not been that team that that's so well connected. They, they had those choices as well. Right. They could have looked at different things and and not put themselves mentally in that place where they can dominate you know and and we've seen them struggle in the beginning right they've lost a couple of games they're 10 and 3 right now so they have lost games they just you know won when when it counted in the away games which which now the away games are not as bad as the as they usually are with the fans right like you mentioned usually away games you're 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 more there's more 
against you, stacked against you because of the fans, I, right? I want to see 15 road wins in a row. Shit, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's, that's the what threshold. I wanted. That's, that's what I, I if I, you know, if I'm Frank Vogel, I'm telling them get to 15, you know, people are going to say, oh, it doesn't count because it's a, uh, it's during pandemic. So you don't have the pressure of the fans against mm -hmm. you get to 15 and then it's real, you know? So you just kind of in the mindset of don't be happy. Don't be complacent, you know, yeah. shoot for the stars. And hey, yeah, man, we're, it feels like, it feels like we're light years ahead, ahead of everybody. You know, it, 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 it just, it feels like that. And, and it's a good feeling you know, again, going back to that bet, uh, mm -hmm. to even, <laughs> to even have that, that's how, you know, like you're competing within each other, you know? So, yeah. And, and in a positive kind of build building, um, building each other type of way. Uh, Dennis Schroeder, I had no idea. I had no idea where he was from. I was just looking it up. It looks like he's German. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. He's so, got an accent when he talks, when you hear him talk in the interviews, he's got an accent. I had, I hadn't heard him talk in an interview or speak in an interview. And, and I was like, wait a minute, where's this guy from? And <laughs> mm -hmm. he's, he's German. So that's pretty cool. We're, 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 uh, diverse over here in LA. Yeah, Marcus Saul, he's from Spain. Spain, yeah. Right, so there's definitely guys in the team that are from other places. Uh, they also have um, Giannis's brother in the team, right? So I'm not sure where he's from, but I know he's not from the U.S. Uh, Greek, no? Or Greek? Yeah, Greece. Greek, yeah. yeah. So, hey, um, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, man. <laughs> the, the Brooklyn Nets, what's going on? It's interesting, right? Because with with James Harden added to that lineup, it, they're a tough team to beat. They were already playing pretty good because KD has been dominant, right, offensively, and they have a lot of young guys that that are athletic and that can put up shots, and and so they they, they have a very good team. But now with James Harden, man, that's gonna be tough. Now the question is Kyrie Irving, right? Like, what's going on with him? So. Uh, we'll we'll see how that works out, you know, uh, later on. But I feel like right now they're definitely the team to beat in the East, and and the expectation is that they'll go to the finals, past the the Milwaukee Bucks, and meet the Lakers there. Yeah, um, I still you know, if 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 we had to put the Lakers and the Nets in a seven game series, say a month from now, I still cho choose the Lakers. I just think our chemistry is way better. Yeah. Um, I think those guys will turn on each other. <laughs> uh number one, James Harden. I really, really, really don't like how he handled that the end there with, with Houston. Calling your teammates out like that to me is a big kind of line that you don't cross. So I definitely feel for Demarcus Cousin. Uh I mean ultimately he got what he wanted. <laughs> he got like everything he wanted to get to get to to to, to the Brooklyn Nets and and uh, you're right with Kyrie kind of people are saying retirement. You know, I'm hearing Stephen A. Smith calling for retirement from Kyrie because he it, it sounds like he just doesn't want to be there, you know. So I'm like, I don't understand. You know, I do not understand how you can be playing any sport, you know, to be privileged to be playing any sport at, at that level and just not want to it's 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 weird um but in reading some of the stuff that i've been reading since the james harden trade it looks like he's committed to making it work yeah you know, so uh, so my, my thought behind Kyrie irving is just that I, I i almost feel like he's looking at just life bigger than basketball in a sense and mm -hmm. with COVID going on right now you know, we, we don't know everything that's going on with his personal life. You know what I mean? Like his his parents, his his cousins, his uncles, like all that stuff. We don't know how it's affecting them. And so I feel like that has made him question a little bit just just what he's doing right now. Right. And, and where his importance, where his priorities are and maybe family right now is something that he wants to focus on more than basketball right and we we saw him playing really well in the beginning of the season so we know that that when he plays when he's on the court he can do his thing he can play ball uh, but I think it's a uh, having COVID right now it's a distraction for him and and so I think he just needs some time to just kind of you know re refocus I guess and try and figure out 
how to move forward. But I think that this is an opportunity for him to win another championship, right? And if that's what he wants, if ultimately he wants to win a championship, which is which I'm sure he does. That's the reason he went to the Brooklyn Nets because he knew that he was going to be able to play with KD them together. You know, we've seen them play really well together and now adding James Harding, like that wasn't the expectation there last year. I don't think that they planned for this this season, but now adding him to the lineup as well, obviously that improves their chances by a lot. So I think with him, it's just a matter of giving him time and, and being, I don't know, just letting him be a person. You know what I mean? Uh, we talked about LeBron James a little bit last, last week in regard to him being more than a basketball player. Right. And how he's involved with voting and Black Lives Matter and all that. And so I think with Kyrie Irving, it's that kind of same uh, mindset of rigid, where it's more than just basketball. And and that's just my perspective on it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it's OK now that James Harden is there. But when it was just Kevin Durant, it felt like he was kind of leaving him, leave him, leave, leaving him hanging. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's just. When when you're on a team, like I I understand that also, but you kind of got to show up to work too, especially you know, I don't know, and and we're not on the inside of those conversations, so it's hard to so it's hard to kind of criticize somebody when you you're right, you know, we don't know what's going on with his family, um, but we hope I, I'm hoping he he comes back ready to play because I yeah. I want to I want to see the Nets. <laughs> Yeah, and he's a great ball player, man. I've always been a fan of him. You know, I, I love the way that he drives in. He, he His ability to, like, switch in the air to different hands and do the crazy layups that he does. So he's a great player. I'm a fan, so I definitely want to see him come back and, and do his thing and go for a championship. How do you, how do you think they're going to kind of gel, those three guys? I, I, I feel like it's going to be rough, man. I feel like they're all very ball dominant, and so... They're going to have to figure it out. I think they're going to struggle in the beginning to figure out how to play with together, how to play with each other, because they they all need the ball in their hands in, in a way. They're not spot up shooters. Um, KD, I would say, is the most um, able to do that because he learned a lot of that with the Golden State Warriors, right? Just going through screens and uh, and getting open and making those shots. But we, we've seen him this year just... He can just flat out just dominate, be a playmaker, have the ball in his hands, and just he knows what to, what to do with it. So it's gonna be interesting to see that. It's gonna, I think they'll still struggle in the beginning. Who's uh, who do you think is gonna be the main ball handler, or is there gonna be a main ball handler? Damn, that's a great question. They're all so good at that. If I had to choose one, I guess I would give it to KD. I feel like KD would have. In my eyes, he has a little bit more. I, he, I think he might be the older one, but but I think him being uh, there at the Brooklyn Nets before James Harden puts him a little bit above him, and just with Kyrie, with everything that he's going through right now, I think KD seems more focused. And you know, he had his injury last year, being out for so long. I feel like he just he was itching to get back on the court. So I feel like he might be the one to step up and and put the team on his back for a bit until the other guys kind of kind of catch up you know because yeah, james I harden think, I, too he struggled yeah, I with think, this season nah this he's just not he hasn't he just hasn't been trying i think they have to put the ball in james harden hand J- james harden's hand for the most part because i think he has the best playmaking ability for others um i mean they all they all can you know they're all capable of it but i just think he's he kind of gives them the most creative uh uh, piece and it's interesting because he's he's joining back with D'Antoni right yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we know he loves because he doesn't love play, like playing defense so <laughs> oh man Steve Nash got his whole crew he's Steve Steve Nash is in like a uh he's in a position to the 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 the, they, the league wants to see him succeed you know everybody loves yeah. Steve Nash he's a great guy you know so we want to you know see him succeed but not at the cost of the Lakers, so <laughs> yeah, not not this year or, or in a few years. But yeah, we, man. So that's gonna be it's gonna be fun, man, because it feels like to me like good versus evil. You know, we we <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm saying the Lakers are you know the fighting for good, and then you got some divas on the other end, man. All three <laughs> of those guys, <laughs> for sure. 
Yeah, I can uh, see that. I can see I can see how it can also be played in that way in the media if they play in the finals, you know what I mean? Like ESPN talking about that, you know, like the Lakers being, you know, the the good guys and the and the Nets just with every all the drama that's going on just kind of being the bad guys. Yeah, you know, heck yeah. It's true, man. You know, Kevin Durant's been known to 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 lash out, you know, to create Twitter burner burner accounts or Instagram burner accounts. Uh, oh, Kyrie's been known to, you know, he's he's being a diva, media. being a diva right now. Yeah. And you know, James Harden just left Houston hanging. Yeah. You know, after Houston put ev- all their eggs in the James Harden basket. Yeah. So all those guys are kind of like, man, some villains. Hey, but but Houston, so now, okay, they got they got this problem out of their hands. So that's good. And then they have John Wall, which he's been playing great. And the Marcus Cousins, you know, he he's still struggling. He doesn't seem like he's a hundred percent back yet. But I feel like that they have they have an okay team. And now they have eight draft picks <laughs> and they're getting Victor Oladipo. So they're 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 starting to you know just build another team because just adding Oladipo to the team. They're gonna be a, a a better team than than they what they were doing right now because James. Harden was trying, and and then adding the other picks, they can make some moves, right? Either keep them to actually draft or trade for some other players. I'll I'll say this about the Houston Rockets: they're a I think they're a world class organization. I think the way they've handled this whole James Harden situation is good because um you know a lot a lot of respect for for them because it's not easy. Um, and they're always competing. You know, I've never seen since the days of Yao Ming and Ron Artest. Then, you know, they they had, uh, you know, um, Tracy McGrady. The, the, they've never you, they never kind of go away. You know, they're always yeah. trying their best every single year. Um, and you hate to see that franchise kind of go through that. But I think they 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 got some good uh, some good some good uh, return on 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 the trade. So. Yeah, I think they'll be all right. Yeah, that is an interesting blockbuster trade yesterday. I was just so confused for a bit. I was just like, "What's going on? Like, how did the Cavs get involved in here?" <laughs> and yeah, so the Pacers, the Cavs, the Nets, the Rockets. It was just like, "Damn, what's going on?" So it was it was interesting. And then, you know, LeBron LeBron's reaction <laughs> to, you know, he's 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 focused on the team you know Anthony Davis is also focused on uh, on the Lakers and to me I, if I'm the Lakers right now I'm kind of excited you mm-hmm. know I'm excited because it was kind of it felt like it felt like it was just we're gonna crown the Lakers you know but now it feels like there's an actual formidable opponent on the other side you know yeah and 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 let's not forget the Clippers though man because the Clippers yeah. yeah, that's the one team that after this Brooklyn Nets thing, uh, uh, the Clippers are kind of g- going to be that sleeper that you cannot overlook. You know, you cannot overlook. So it's going to be like you have a finals in the Western Conference and then mm-hmm. you're going to have another finals in the, in the in the NBA championship. Yeah, I'm with you on that because I was actually surprised that the Clippers are in second place in standings in the West. They're eight of, eight and four. And then behind them, we have three teams. Jazz, Trailblazers, and Suns at seven and four. So yeah, the, the Clippers, like you said, they're a sleeper because I feel like a, a week ago um, they they were almost like having all these negative, you know, conversations of like you know how are, you know like how how are they going to do this season because they're struggling, but they're actually in second place. So yeah, the, and 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 not just that because it, it almost feels like they don't have the star power anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like it. it that three-headed monster in 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 Brooklyn just took all the attention off the Clippers. Yeah. So they're gonna be, you know, on the Lakers' heels all year. Mm-hmm. And if the Lakers overlook, you know, if the Lakers are looking ahead to to the Brooklyn Nets, and the the Clippers are definitely gonna take that adva- take advantage of that. Uh, so the Lakers make gotta make sure they stay focused, and yeah. I'm confident that they will. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I'm with you on that for sure. So, so yeah, man, so Lakers are playing good, good defense. LeBron's doing good seven games in, uh, in, on the road. So everything looks good for them. The last few games, right. They, they got, they've won four in a row in total. They beat the bulls. They beat the rockets twice and they beat the thunder. 
So they're doing great. Yeah, I agree. The Bulls game was close. Um, but I think after that was uh, when we started seeing the dominance come into play with the defense just just stepping up. And and then we had the blowout wins. Because the, yeah, the then- AD and LeBron haven't been playing that many minutes. Right. So that's so, kind of like what I'm really excited to because everybody is kind of involved in this, you know, mm-hmm. so that's good because we're going to need LeBron and Anthony Davis. The whole the playoffs are going to be brutal. The playoffs are going to be brutal I, like this. These playoffs are going to be so much more intense than 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 the bubble last year. You yeah. know, so we're going to need them as fresh as possible. Uh, we got the Pelicans tomorrow. What do you think about that game? I'm excited. I, I'm looking forward to seeing the the young Pelicans and the old Laker players because <laughs> I'm a huge fan of all of them. And Hart, he he's so good. Hart, you don't. So I have him on my fantasy team, and he's such a great rebounder. So you, you I feel like you wouldn't think of him as that, but he's uh, he he's gotten some double doubles already this season on rebounds and points. So he's he's doing good coming off the bench. Lonzo, obviously, we know that he can put up. Um, you know, points, rebounds, and assist, and then Brandon Ingram, man, he he's a star. So, and I, I mean, obviously Zion Williamson as well. So they got a good, a good young core of athletes, and and so it's going to be a, a challenge, I think, uh, for for the Lakers initially to to contain that Zion and and Zoe one two punch, and then the Ingram, you know, just uh, playmaking ability. So I'm excited. Yeah, uh, the Pelicans are four and six, and they're currently on a four-game losing streak. Yeah. So we're not getting the uh, you the most um, energetic bunch to play against. I think so. I'm thinking it's a, an easy Lakers win, um, but I want to see them turn it around, man, because I think those guys are so good, but. but Maybe the mentality they 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 gotta switch, you know, they gotta switch up. They're, they're a young not... team. Yeah, they're a young team. They kind of like the Thunder, right? We saw the Thunder last night. Like they 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 had an energy. They put up a fight, but they're just a young team. That Al Horford, which is like their leader, because he's the older one. He wasn't playing because they they did a back to back, right? So I think they missed out on his leadership on the court. And so for the Pelicans, I think similarly they're a young team, and and uh, they I feel like they need a veteran leader in there to kind of help them uh, just m- mentally stay focused. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll keep an eye on them, but got to keep growing. Um, and then after that, we got the Warriors on Monday, and then the the Bucks next Thursday. Okay, yeah. So they're they're coming up on on two good games, Warriors and the Bucks. So so right now they gotta just uh, take another easy W against the Pelicans, and then yeah, just kind of get some good wins with the other two teams that we know are gonna put up a fight for sure. Yeah, can't look ahead to the Bucks. Mm-hmm. Got to get through the Pelicans, and then uh, let me see where the Warriors are at, just real quick. Uh, they're in seventh. Six and five, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, they'll be in the playoffs. So, you know, if they got Steph Curry on the lineup healthy, he's always going to give them the, the opportunity to be in the playoffs. Right. All right, man. I think I'm good on 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 some Laker talk for now. What's up with Kobe? Yeah, man. So I'm really excited about what we have in store for for Kobe conversation today because. I think that he he is obviously so well known for his basketball accomplishments, but I think that he was just starting his career outside of basketball, right? And um, I'm talking about Granity Studios, which is his company where he brought a team together of creators, of, of writers, of producers, and and so he his goal was just to create media around sports, around inspiration and education, and to kind of target the younger demographic of athletes, right? Just uh, kids in high school and, and and people that are still interested in sports, but wanted to just kind of, I guess, 
know more of like how you can look at sports as a way to guide you in life in a way. And, and I don't think you get that experience on, until, on, unless you're an athlete, right? And so, and then while you're an athlete, I feel like sometimes you, you lose the motivation or you lose the focus. And I feel like the media that he was trying to create uh, with books and podcasts was to keep the focus alive. Like, let me, let me share stories about, you know, um, how, how getting through an injury uh, helps you at the end, right? Be, being able to recover from an injury um, and, and little things like that, just staying focused. I feel like, the, so the podcast that he created through Granity Studios is called The Punies, which every episode there's a lesson to learn. And it's basically kids playing uh, at, at a playground, baseball, and, and every episode, man, it, it's really dope. So if anybody uh, is interested in this, definitely go take a listen, really short episodes. And then his books, I haven't read the books yet, but The Wise, Wise Narts, same, same kind of concept, you know, just athletes talking about their stories. So I, I like the whole concept of what he was trying to create, you know, he was just getting started with that. So uh, I think that that's something that I wanted to just highlight and, and point people to so they can pay attention to the stuff that he was going to just keep promoting and keep pushing. Yeah. Um, and and uh, how'd you find out about this, first of all? Just through him, you know, before before he died, he was promoting all that. You know, he was talking about Granity Studios in, in interviews and conversations and talking about how he was his experience from being a leader with the Lakers was allowing him to be a leader in his media company. And just like he had Shaq as a teammate and Pau Gasol, right? These good athletes, he knew that in order to create media that was inspiring and that was educational and long lasting, he needed a team around him to help him create these, these ideas, right? The, he's the creator. He's the one that had the ideas, but he needed a team of professionals that had different skills than him and, and writers, for example, right? People, writers, own, illustrators, everything, um, right? Designers. So, so he was just kind of like the head coach and the leader, and he was just putting a team together to help him bring his ideas to life. And so I, I learned about this just through that, just to, again, paying attention after he retired, I was still paying attention to the things that he was doing, the moves he was making, because I knew that he, he had a bigger vision, you know, and we saw, we saw so much, right? Like we'll, other days we'll bring out other conversations in regard to like him coaching his daughter and Mamba Academy and the shoes company. So he had so many other things going on, but right now with Granity Studios, I think that was just something that you know, he wanted to just push sports and education. Yeah. So real quick for, for, and just poking around through, through, through the website. And if you guys want to check it out, that's at granitystudios.com. Uh, or you could just Google granity studios. Um, it, it felt just reading through some of the, there's, there's a book section, there's a podcast section, there's a TV six, section films and like a store. Um, but just poking around through the book section, it felt like he was creating fictional characters, uh, kind of combining like a Harry Potter yeah. with uh, 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 with sports. Yeah. So it, it, it felt like he was creating that kind of fantasy world, uh, uh, but applying sports lessons to it. So I was like, it, I, and and again, you know, this blew my mind when you when you shared it with me because. Uh, you were you when you said he was just getting started, you know, and I'm kind of like, oh, I feel like we were robbed even more now. Like I, I feel like we were robbed of what this, you know, person who was able to accomplish so much through just pushing themselves. Now we were gonna get a piece of the mind, you know, the mind. We saw what he did with his physical, and we heard about his mind, you know. But now he was creating, you know, he was creating. And and we were gonna get to 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 experience that to 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 he we were gonna get inspired by that and and this you know inspired me to kind of really think about took a, I went on a walk after like uh, reading this and in my mind I'm like man this you know Kobe was pushing himself to to create just a whole new world you know a whole new world it was is what he was creating and. Uh, uh, it was really interesting, and and I'm I'm 
I'm hoping that, you know, the people who kind of shared or who saw his vision are still doing the work that, you know, to, to carry out his, his legacy to the best of their abilities, because even though it won't be a hundred percent the same, but would still, I think, you know, knowing Kobe, I know he, 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 he left enough to, to, to kind of draw out a roadmap, you know, for, to, to at least get something out there. So, uh, you know, exciting stuff. Yeah. And when I first saw this too, I think that's another reason why I kept pushing towards Brown Lab Media, right? Because I saw Kobe doing something like that. And I was just like, man, like he already had a full career, right? A Hall of Fame career, yet he's still going to try and create a, another career. So I'm just like, okay, in the last 10 years of my life, I've gone to school to become an athletic trainer, right? And I like helping people with their health through personal training or, you know, whatever mode it is, right? Exercise and diet and all that. So I put myself in a position where, where I have the skills, I have the knowledge to help people with that. But there's other curiosities, there's other skills that I have, and there's other stories that I can tell. And, and, and why, why, why wouldn't I also pursue that, right? If I have that interest as well to, to create Brown Lab Media so that I can create my own stories around podcasts and around articles. And then I can also get other people involved like yourself, right? You have your own story, but my goal is to, you know, just help, help you with your own music and, and bring more attention to you through Brown Lab Media and the Daily Laker podcast, right? And so I feel like just seeing Kobe do that, again, just motivated me to, to push myself and be like, okay, I've lived one life for 10 years and I've gotten pretty good at that. Let me try a different life for the next 10 years and see how that goes, right? And that that's inspiring, man. That Again, you, you know, that just seeing seeing what 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 his ideas kind of come to, to life a little bit inspired you you know and and um, we gotta keep that light going you know we gotta keep that fire going and keep inspiring people yeah you know so that's his legacy right that's yeah. his legacy actually uh, on my twitter account i i have this quote from kobe because it really hit me man and and it's something that i want to continue to just think about and push because i think it's it just continues to to keep Kobe in our mind. So his quote is the most important thing is to try and inspire people so that they can be great at whatever they want to do. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's like so simple, but so simple, but so powerful, you know, like, yeah. And, and that's, to me, that's the purpose of Brown Lab Media. I want to inspire others with their own creativity, you know, so, so that, so that, you're, you're happy doing what you love to do. You know what I mean? And, and if you can make that another source of revenue for yourself so that you can continue to do what you love to do and get paid for it. Like who wouldn't want to do that for the rest of their life? You know what I mean? And I think that's what Kobe was doing. He got to play basketball, which is what he loved. And then he got to uh, start a media company, which was another thing that he loved. And so, you know, I just, I just want to pursue that. I feel like Kobe is still my mentor, even though he's not here anymore. Right. I, absolutely. Inspiration. Brown Lab Media to the top. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, man. So I just wanted to highlight Granity Studios. I feel like there's a lot of media to consume there. And I, you know, I hope that I can find some time to read some of those books and, and kind of highlight the books and the stories that they tell as well. Because I, I again, I think the, the demographic that he was trying to target was kids, even with the punies. It's a, it's a kid's podcast, but there's a lesson in every episode. And, and so I think that he wanted to start at the bottom, you know, because he has kids too, right? And and so he wanted to just um, kind of help his own kids with, with lessons. And I think with that, he was helping millions of other kids as well. Yeah. And, and, and in some of the, one of the books, it felt like he was speaking about his daughter and how she was, you know, so it felt like he was writing his daughter's life mm -hmm. and how he sees her kind of battling through certain things. So. I don't know, right. very interesting. I'm definitely interested in check, check, checking it out also. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that that was that was it for me. Just wanted to like I said highlight that and hopefully get some more eyes, more attention on that and keep Kobe's legacy alive. And 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 uh yeah, cuz this is like I had no clue about this. So, I'm, you know, 
encourage everybody to, to to take a look you know spend some time in there it's very inspiring definitely so so that's i think that's it for today uh last thing that i would want to say is we have a new podcast on brown lab media called the 86 crew podcast my friend daryl and isaid they started their own podcast they they're both managers at a restaurant and they're sharing stories about their experiences being managers and, and working up to that point. And they're bringing other people that work in the industry, the restaurant, food industry, and sharing their stories as well. Their, their wins, their losses, you know, the drama, the, the humor. So, uh, so go to brownlab.com. You can listen to a podcast through there or on Spotify or Anchor and, and get, get to listen to some of those episodes. So specifically managing in the service industry, in the restaurant, in the food and service industry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. There, I'm sure there's a lot of stories to that. <laughs> yes. Especially right now because they're still working. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're, they're out there. They're hustling, you know. So so there's even there, there's stories specifically to our time right now. Right. Uh, and if I got something uh, where I could lead everybody to we just dropped a song yesterday with willie west i'm not sure if you guys have uh, gotten a chance to listen to it it's called quita te tu that's uh, a little flex it's a little flex on the rap game you know all the latino rappers in la uh be 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 very 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 uh warned with what's coming <laughs> <laughs> i love it that's dope man yeah congrats on that man yeah keep keep doing your thing because that's that's what we have to do stay consistent right stay yeah. stay pushing yeah. ourselves and, and keep creating media and, and keep keeping you know the people that are paying attention to the stuff that we're doing just up to date so yeah thanks for sharing that i'll definitely check that out as well is it where, where is it where, where can we find it's, it? it's everywhere just look up uh, either willie west or sal roses on on spotify or you know wherever you listen to music it, it just uh it was released yesterday uh, shout out to Willie West, man. That 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 man brings out the best in me, you know. So, uh, it's 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 a dope song. I think you'll like it, man. Yeah, awesome, man. And, and again, the theme song in in this podcast, the Daily Laker, the the intro and the outro, is it, made by you and Willie West. So, you know, you guys are imprinted in this podcast. So we we got to get him inside here one of these days. And, and oh yeah, one of these stuff. days we'll we'll have. He's a huge Laker fan. Like we, we are, we're all huge Laker fans. So we'll we'll, we'll talk Lakers. Definitely. All right, brother. Well, uh, all right, brother. Have a good weekend. Uh, hopefully, we uh, we talk after what three three Laker wins, three yes. more Laker wins in a row. <laughs> Let, let's do that. Let's shoot for that. Definitely. Uh, and uh, you know, finish the finish the week strong, and uh, I'll see you next Thursday. Definitely. All right, Sal. Take care, brother. Stay safe out there.